we'll start with the prayers om bhadram karne bhe shruniyama deva bhadram pashe maakshabhir yajatra stirai rangai hi sushtu vagum sastanu bihi vyashema deva hi tam yadayu ho swastina indro vridha sravaha swastina pusha vishvaveda swastina stakshora rishtane mihi swastino brihaspatir dadato om shanti 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 so we are doing this mandukya upanishad with 12 mantras and 215 karika verses karika means commentary commentary of gaudapada acharya on this 12 mantras that is what we are studying at the moment we have finished the upanishadic portion which is the main teaching of the three states of consciousness which we experience and something which is other than the three states which is called as turiyam this is how this upanishad is trying to reveal our true nature see whenever we are studying the spiritual texts we must be very clear the spiritual texts are not dealing with our vyavahara that means they are not dealing with our transactions of day to day uh, uh, activities and so on they are taking us to a very very high plane in which we are existing but we don't know that and different upanishads approach the topic in different ways like i explained to you right in the beginning of the upanishadic uh, introduction in this upanishad it's a very unique upanishad where the entire state of waking is taken up for inquiry the entire state of dream is taken up for inquiry and lastly the in inquiry into the sleep state and they reveal to us new facts which we do not know about our existence in the sleep state for example this upanishad clearly states that we are one with god principle ishvara principle in the sleep state generally we do not come to know this when we read the prakarna granthas or when we read bhagavad gita but the upanishad reveals to us that in our sleep state we are one with ishvara it equates our our existence in this life itself with ishvara is not an ishvara which we are trying to reach after death of the body it is now and here where we can say that i am this pure existence pure consciousness and pure bliss that is my real nature if that is my real nature why i am not aware of this that is that will be the next question for all of us this is a very important inquiry in vedanta where it says that we all have got something called as mula avidya which means self ignorance ignorance about atma the moment we are able to understand that there is one single principle one entity which is called as atma or brahman which is the core of not only this body but it is the core of the entire universe this is a new teaching which 
my intellect picks up. There is an entity, there is an eternal uh, being, and it has always been there. And that is what the seventh mantra of this Upanishad reveals as Turiyam Brahma. There is a being, there is an eternal being for the entire universe, which is called as Sat, which is called as Chit, which is called as Ananda. They are three technical terms, but all of them, they mean the same entity, the same being. What I'm trying to do through this Upanishad is take my own mind away from this external world. Take my mind away from this physical body. Go deeper and look and go into my subtle body of the mind, thoughts, emotions, and so on. Go beyond that to the causal body which I have, which I experience in my sleep state as ignorance. And then it says that which is beyond that ignorance state is our real nature, real nature. That is what is called as Thuriyam Brahma. It is not that we have to go every time into that state and understand it like this, but this is just the way we, the Upanishad explains so that the moment we are able to go through this process of inquiry and reach that Thuriyam state, then the Upanishad says that that is your permanent state. You have come into this body from that state. When you leave this body, you will go back to that state of Thuriyam. So Thuriyam is the crux of this Mandukya Upanishad, which is explained in this seventh mantra. Many of us find it difficult to absorb this knowledge, first of all, and secondly, to realize this in our own self. That takes a little bit of preparation in the mind. In order that we can prepare our mind to remain stable in that Thuriyam state, the Upanishad itself gives us the upasana, the meditation process, by which we gradually try to quieten our mind. In the waking state itself, we do a meditation. We say that all our, what I experience in the waking state is called as Amatra of Omkara. Then it says, all I experience in the, in the dream state is ukara. So my mind has to travel and it has to drop the waking state. It has, that means the akara of om resolves in ukara, in the dream. From the dream world, it resolves into the sleep state. So as a jiva, I don't have to only look at the world of which I experience outside in my waking state. I do have problems in the waking state. There are so many issues connected, but the Upanishads says, do not stop here. Go into the analysis of the dream state. Go into the analysis of the sleep state. And then ask the question, who is this jiva which has experienced the three states of the mind. The jiva is not the mind. The jiva is not the world. Jiva is something, some consciousness principle, the observing principle, the seer of the world. So the seer is totally different than the seen. Drik is different than drishyam. This is how I understand the Thuriyam, which has been revealed in this seventh mantra. So I do Upasana of Akara, Ukara, Makara, resolve all this into the silence. 
when i resolve them into silence that silence is called as thuriyam from which again the entire three states will come again they will go through a process again they will go back this is the spiritual essence of this whole creation we are not analyzing only the physical world in the physical world the science anal analyzes the physical world extremely well but this is beyond science this talks about consciousness awareness in which all this is happening not only the physical world also the subtle world the mental world and the causal world in vedanta we talked about we we talk about three types of akasha this will help you to understand this three states slightly better bhuta akasha means the space which is which is enclosing the physical world it's called bhuta akasha which is the gross space then there is something called as chitta akasha chitta akasha means the mental space the mental space is higher than the gross space which we are used to where we including my body and the whole cosmos is included in the gross space beyond this gross space is this chitta akasha the mental space the subtle space in that subtle space all the indriyas the uh, mind the memory the uh, uh, all the impressions old impressions all those things are all there in the chitta akasha and beyond this chitta akasha there is something called as chida akasha one is chitta c h i t t a and the next one is chida akasha c h i d a chidakasha is the consciousness the space of consciousness in which i alone am there there is no world there is no mental world i alone exist that is called as the pure being that is the thuriya which is described in the seventh mantra in chida akasha there is no world there is no body there is no mind all that i have been left in the other two worlds in the bhuta akasha we leave the physical body in the mental the dreams and all that is already left in the subtle space which is the chitta akasha the dreams are seen in the chitta akasha and then the causal body the sleep state also has ignorance that is also a part of the chitta akasha and finally we have this thuriyam the the chida akasha chida akasha is the subtlest you see we are going from gross to subtle to subtlest in the subtlest the gross is included in the consciousness the gross and the subtle is included so this is how we progress this is how the teaching goes and this will help me to realize that beyond the sleep state of ignorance there is a real being there is a real existence and that is conscious that state is called as sat chit ananda we cannot diverse sat and chit very important lesson in vedanta sat the being itself is chit it is conscious don't try to separate the two then you will realize this instantly instantaneously right now i am that sat i am that chit 
whatever I experience beyond the ignorance of sleep state, that is what is called as Sat and Chit. And what separates the Sat and Chit is the mind. The moment the mind becomes awake, that Sat Chit, the real Swarupam, gets disturbed and then it follows the mind. The mind shows us, the mind is a window of the three worlds of the waking dream and sleep. Again, the mind resolves into this Chidakasha and then I am one with my own nature. The Shruti, the mother, Shruti means the mother of Upanishads, gives birth to this Chidakasha to me. The mother, the physical mother outside has given birth to this body. The mind has taken several bodies in the previous births. At the same time, this mind has had ignorance attached to it. Therefore, it went on taking bodies after bodies. But now, this Shruti mother has given me birth to this Chidakasha Jiva. I am that supreme conscious self. All of us can experience this. It is there in us. That is the core of my being. That is what we are trying to achieve in our meditation exercises. We are trying to reach that core self in us. With this short introduction, I will move forward to the to where we stopped last week and continue the teaching. Chatur Matra Omkara Vichara. This is where we stopped last week. And here you should remember that what we are studying is the four verses, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This section, Om Chatur Matra Omkara Vichara, is a study of the five mantras from 8 to 12. The ninth, the eighth mantra is an introduction. The ninth mantra is a upasana on akara. A, the letter A of Om. It stands for the entire physical world, Virat. Virat is a word for experience, bhogaha, for enjoyment. And who is the Jiva? The Jiva is Vishwa. Then you have Ukara, is the world of dreams. And that world is given a name Hiranyagarbha. And the Jiva which is experiencing the dream is called as Taijasa. The third letter Ma stands for Ishwara, the world of causal world, which is the sleep state, where the world exists in an unmanifest, undifferentiated condition. And beyond this Om, the three worlds, gross, subtle and causal, is the silence, which is called as Thuriyam. And this Thuriyam is none other than Brahman. Brahman means it is the total world in, in which is beyond the seed state of the causal world. That means it is the absolute. So when you go through the meditation of this Omkara, it becomes easy for us to understand our real nature. It requires practice. You can do it after, because once you have learned how to do the meditation, I did start last week the Omkara meditation. 
once you learn the process it's very easy and then once you have learned to remain as once you have identified in your own mind what is this turiyam in me then you will never doubt your nature as this body or as this mind i will always remember my nature is turiyam my nature is the absolute nature when i am not in this body when i am not in this dream world when i am not in the sleep world i am as turiyam i learn to claim that as my swarupa even when i am in the waking state that is my real nature that is the teaching so this meditation chases the mind to claim turiyam it makes my mind pure and pure the more i dwell on this omkara initially you can take each alphabet repeat after each alphabet akara means physical world i drop the physical world you have to repeat this in the meditation ukara means dream world i learn to drop this also as not me makara the sleep world is also not me that is not my real nature and then deliberately in meditation you tell yourself i am turiyam and the turiyam is sat chit ananda it is shantam advaitam you remember these two words in meditation shantam means absolute peace without any sorrow there is no mention of sorrow at all in that turiyam it's because it is shantam that is why it is called as bliss and is conscious it is not inert it is not like the world of objects i am conscious being is the ultimate lesson from this mandokya upanishad so what we were saying is this chaturmatra analysis normally uh, this is just to explain how to reach this turiyam that's all we are trying to analyze this omkara further and further so that we can arrive at the turiya turiya avastha the fourth state they call it fourth state with the reference to the three states but ultimately it is just one state in which all the three states come and go we arrive at gold by resolving bangle chain and ring for example you 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 see the ornaments bangle is a name of gold in a certain form similarly chain bangle you wear in your hand the chain you drop in your neck and a ring you put in your finger so they have different usage but and they, they are all one gold so similarly turiyam is the gold compared to the gold here in the example and the bangle chain and ring are the three avasthas waking dream and sleep they have utility they have novelty in them but they are not the reality the reality is that consciousness in which these three are coming and going we give a name to our experiences as waking dream sleep these are just names they are on they are ultimately if you see everything is happening in consciousness automatically there is a controller for the three states we are going beyond the controller ishvara and asking how is this all happening where is it all happening the moment i drop the name and form from this body what happens is i am the pure being 
And in that pure being, these three states are coming and going. I am not one of the three states. I am that pure being. That is the ultimate teaching of Mandukya. So we arrive at awareness, silence, consciousness by resolving the akara, ukara, and makara. When we resolve the three, what happens is you will say there is a silence and that silence itself is, is called as turiyam. It is called as consciousness. Don't try to search for something else. That is the mistake we make, make most of the times. People come and ask me, I see, I, I, I see only blankness. What do I do next? I can't do anything else. I, where do I, what do I search for? There is no more search. Silence, blankness is the end of the teaching. And then you apply the knowledge of the scriptures that I am that silence. Own up the silence, then the silence merges with our real nature. You negate pada by padartha nisheda. That means I negate the, uh, uh, the akara pada by the artha of the pada. That means the, the baking state or the bangle. Similarly, I take the ukara and negate with the pada artha. Ukara artha for that is the dream state. So we negate the name and form automatically you are on the lap of consciousness. Even now, at the, in the waking state itself, your sense organs are listening. But the consciousness is the one in which they are all, the words are coming and going. In between, you observe the silence. You are able to observe the silence because of the consciousness in which there is no other words in which there is no sound avidana avidya nishedaha tad adishthana prapti eva lakshyam this is what shankaracharya uses in his bhashya that means the entire ignorance of my nature is gone. By this adhishthanam, the knowledge of this turiyam. And this ignorance, once it goes away, that itself is the lakshyam. It is an indicator that I am the pure consciousness. The Virat, Hiranyagarbha and Ishvara, they are all in the Saguna field. Saguna field means what? with gunas with guna means mayas gunas sattvic rajasic ma, tamasic gunas the sleep state is tamasic guna thus uh, the waking state is sattva guna and this dream state is the rajoguna and all the three states are coming and going because of the shakti of ishvara the shakti of that turiyam It is all happening in Turiyam, in one Chidakasha, Chit Akasha, which is Turiyam. All these events happen. Events of waking, events of dream, event of sleep, where you don't experience anything. So once the name, object, time, space attributes are all gone, we experientially, we feel blankness. And what is left out is this Turiyam. During Shankaracharya's time, there were some schools of thought. And they said the Shunyam, blankness, is nothingness. That was the Buddhist philosophy which exists during Shankaracharya's time. Today the world is very, very different. 
and shankaracharya uh, analyzes this aspect because at that time this was very famous that the whole world is nothing it is coming from that sleep state and sleep state is nothing so the whole world is coming from nothing and going back to nothing even today we may feel that may be the reality who knows but shankaracharya and gaudapada acharya they all negate that and they say that this shunyam is nothing but sakshi chaitanyam it is the witness consciousness which is called as silence and it is a conscious principle it is not an inert nothing it is conscious and what they argue is to say nothing remains you the conscious being must exist that is what we say in the sleep state that conscious being which is my real nature exists it is self shining na tatra suryo bhati it doesn't require any physical light because we are talking about a spiritual existence i am a spiritual being i have a spiritual existence and i am conscious spiritual being this body is living the body's existence is temporary incidental through something which we call it as law, law of karma so if you want to analyze our life then you have to use the law of karma veda vedanta the scholars have been able to thread bare analyze jiva jagat and ishvara what is this world what is the uh, jiva and who is the creator vedanta analyzes they have all this our uh, the scholars they have been scholars much much before us and they have analyzed thread bare and they have come to this conclusion through the scriptural knowledge that there is a pure being which is called as puriyam or awareness consciousness and this benefit of knowing this knowledge can come to anybody who understands this toria anybody you can be a dutchman you can be an australian you can be a american you can be a, 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 from india from china from anywhere but as long as you understand because all of us are human beings we are not only human beings we understand ourselves to be spiritual beings one spiritual being exists in this entire cosmos and that spiritual being is described in these upanishadic mantras whoever knows this this is what even in bhagavad gita lord krishna says whoever knows this knowledge of krishna's teaching they will know the real atma the thuriya atma with this the topic of the 12 mantras is over from now on i will explain to you what is the second chapter third chapter and fourth chapter there are three other chapters in the first chapter itself there are certain karikas commentary on the 12 mantras and the karikas there are three topics which are usually discussed in this analysis there are three topics so the first topic is a comparative study of the pada trayam pada trayam that means again going back into the waking analyze the waking in depth analyze the dream analyze the sleep that is one type of analysis in these verses which are 215 215 what i am going to do in the next 3 4 lectures is give you an explanation a summary of those 215 verses because if i have to take this 200 verses it will take at least 2 years to finish 
once a class 52 weeks it will take minimum two years but you will get an idea in this in this in this in this short uh, analysis you will get an idea see our goal is should be very clear our goal is very easy actually own up the thorium own up the chidakasha as my real nature and everything else is coming and going, coming and going. A day will come, a day will end again, and day, a day will come, another day will go. All this coming and going is as per the law of karma. Let me go through it. Let me do my duty. While I'm awake, I do my duty. I, I, I perform to the best of my ability, use my mind to do the act actions required in any situation to the best of my ability at the same time remember this knowledge of turiya so second topic is thana trayam for upasana that means where do i put this akara where do i put this ukara and where do i put this makara and the last one is omkara dhyanam the turiya dhyanam so these are the three main topics in all this, uh, all these 215 verses. The, the first topic, like I said, is the comparative study of the three identities which I gather in each state. For example, in the waking state, the, I am called Vishwa. Vishwa is an identity of Thuriyam when the physical body is in front. Suppose your daughter is in front of you, you become a mother or a father. Similarly, when I am Turiyam, the pure Satchit Ananda consciousness, when I see the waking world, I take the role of a Vishwa. It's just a name. This is only a name used to arrive at Turiyam. You see, ultimately you should remember that my goal is what? to arrive at the uh, worldless, objectless awareness. So ignorance about this pure consciousness as the self, as the limitless self. We don't have any limitations of time, space or causation in Turiya because consciousness is beyond all three. So when I, this waking world comes, I'm identified with ignorance and error. Error is what? That I am this body, I am this mind. I am going through sorrow. I have a lot of problems. This is what is called as error. These are all the projections in the mind because the mind is not aware that its sorupam is atma. In Taijasa, in the dream world, I am called as Taijasa and there also I have ignorance and error. Ignorance about my real state of Turiyam. And again, projections take place. Pragna, the third state, the sleep state, is associated with only ignorance. There is no projections of the mind. And it is only the wheeling, the wheeling of the nature, which is my Thuriyam state is wheeled from me. So the three states are nothing else but this analysis of Vishwa, Taijasa and Pragna. And who, what is this Turiyam? It is not associated with neither the ignorance, neither the error. It is absolute, independent. It is not even called a state. It is just an independent entity. That is why the name given is reality. Reality means it is real. 
it is veda which is coming and tell me that that is real when the veda says that that is real i take it as real i don't question it because veda is a eye of knowledge it has the uh, it, it has the uh, status of being a pramanam pramanam means it reveals something eyes are a pramanam for the for the form and color the ears are a pramanam for sound the tongue is the pramanam for the tastes the skin is the pramanam for hot and cold touch so these are all pramanams sources of knowledge and what is the source for atma if you ask the scriptures are the source you don't have to doubt it just take it as a fact and see how much benefit you can derive out of this knowledge many skeptics do not accept veda as a pramanam sankhya yoga nyaya vaisheshika purva mimamsa all the schools of thought they do not accept veda as the primary pramanam they go into logic they say logically it is not possible vedanta advaitin accepts this it says yes logically it is not possible but logic cannot be reveal the truth that is the counter argument of vedanta because it is the scripture which reveals the truth is not the logic there are many sent, many vakyams in the in different upanishads which says that this atma cannot be known because of your wealth this atma cannot be known because of your reasoning ability many people think oh i am a very great logician i will find out i'll go through all the upanishads i will go and pinpoint why this upanishad is wrong and why this upanishad is uh, totally incorrect because it's contradicting itself many people approach the upanishads like that and veda vyasa the writer of brahma sutra beautifully brings all the upanishads upanishads together and gives a reason the reasoning of trying to teach us that this upanishads are teaching us of one vastu in brahma sutra this has been beautifully analyzed that the that the entire vedic literature consisting of 1500 upanishads they all reveal one truth of this whole cosmos which is this consciousness awareness in that awareness everything is happening and it's 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 a it's a cycle of birth death waking dream sleep sorrow joy so many things are happening but it is all one there is one being two technical words are used in this mandokya upanishad one is called as agrahanam another is called as anyata grahanam for those people who are going to read the karikas the commentaries this is this this analysis which i am doing now will be useful even if you don't study the karikas of 215 mantras you can at least appreciate how the upanishad the the scholars in the past how did they arrive and claim this thuriyam as their own nature when you go through this analysis of uh, uh, these uh, this 
three chapters, you'll come to know that. Agrahanam means it is the seed state, the sleep state. Karana avastha. Like in the sixth mantra of the Upanishad, it clearly says that there is agrahanam. Agrahanam means you don't know anything. Neither you know yourself, neither you know the world. And that is called as Ajnanam. That Ajnanam or is also called as Agrahanam. You don't, you're not able to hold anything in that state. You can't hold your wealth, you can't hold your body, you can't hold your mind, you can't hold anything in that state of sleep. And Anyatha Grahanam is the second technical word. It is the Karyam. Sopna and Jagrat, the two states are an effect of that ignorant state. So every day when we wake up, when we see this world ahead in front of us, it is due to the ignorance of our real nature. I see this entire world, that's not a problem. Seeing the world is not a problem. But saying that I am this body, which is the ultimate thing in creation, that is what is called as error. Ankuraha. Ankuraha means it is the sprout. Like a seed has got a sprout. So similarly from this seed of the sleep state, the sprout of waking and dream state comes up. And then there are so many projections and, you know, you see, have a beautiful world and then where we experience so many things and then it goes back again to Turiyam. So that is about the comparison of three states. That is one topic. I'm giving you the summary of the three, uh, three chapters. That means all the 215 verses are broken up into three topics. And this is a summary. Then we'll go into the chapters. Sthana trayam for upasana. In meditation, when I'm doing the meditation, the Upanishad says that when you meditate on the first pada, which is the waking state, which is with the physical body, we, whatever we experience, in meditation, you, the, the, the sthanam, the, place where you meditate is the right eye. For Thaijasa, they say the place of meditation is the mind for the dream world. That I am the Thaijasa, I am the dreamer. You focus on the mind. On the first state, it is the eye. Right eye. And then the sleep state, you focus attention on the pragna, pragna sleep state, you say, okay, your attention should be on your rhythm. Rhythm means the heart, the center. In meditation, it is possible. You can shift your attention from the right eye to the mind in the center of the eyebrows, then to the heart below. It's possible. A matra, o matra, Ma matra, a o ma, a o ma, right, middle, bottom, right, middle, center, right, middle, center. This is how meditation is possible. This is prescribed in the Upanishad. And in the, in the three states, what is the enjoyment, bhoga? Bhoga for the jiva. See, for example, I am a jiva. Jiva means the spirit in this body. In the spirit in this body is enjoying the physical world, the physical enjoyments, the taste of food, the beautiful <coughs> flowers, the fragrance of the flowers. These are all called as Thula Bhoga. Thula Bhoga, the gross world experience. And in the, for the Taijasa, Taijasa means the dreamer. It is the Sukshma Bhoga. 
the subtle world of experience. You, I'm sure you appreciate that there are two different worlds altogether. What I experience in my dream world is totally different than what I experience in my physical waking world. Then the third stage is the Pragna Ananda Bhoga. Experience of Ananda. There is no Dukkham at all. All of us experience Sukham, happiness. 100% happiness in deep sleep state. Where there is no dream, there is no waking. And the Bhogaha, the enjoyment is our own causal body which is called as Ananda, uh, reflection of Ananda, of the Atma in that state. So it is basically experience of Atma, but it is reflected Ananda. So the first two topics are the paraphrase of the Upanishads. The Three padas, that means akara, ukara, makara. How do I understand them? Which place do I meditate? How do I meditate? That is what is the first two topics. The third topic is omkara dhyanam. And om is the ideal name for the Thuriyam or Brahman. Brahman and Thuriyam is the same. Pranavaha. Pranavaha. We call it Pranava Mantra. Pra means ideal, perfect, appropriate. Navaha means name. Uttama Namaha. Pranava Mantra. Pranava means it's an ideal name for that Thuriyam. Why Om is an ideal name for Brahman? If you ask this question, all other names will reveal either Sagunam or Nirgunam aspect only. Let us see how. The sound part of Om, which I have always repeated, reveals the Sagunam Brahma. That means the same pure Thuriyam when it is associated because of some law of karma of the whole world, then it becomes as though with gunas. And it re reveals the, the same consciousness with the gunas, which means with the, with the maya principle, sattvic, rajasik and tamasik. And the silence is revealing between the two ohms is revealing the nirguna Brahman. Nirguna means what? Without any properties of the mind, body, world. That is what is the silence portion. So the Sagunam Brahma has got Vishwa, Hiranyagarbha and Ishvara, which you now, now you will understand this very well because I have explained to you what is Vishwa, what is Hiranyagarbha, what is Ishvara, Auma. And the way to meditation is, the first step is, you concentrate on the sound part of Omkara. This is an interesting area. Many a times the question is asked, even last week, Uma had asked this question about focusing on breath, focusing on the sound. How do I do it? These confusions are there because in yoga, it is a different method of meditation. In Vedanta, it is a different method of meditation. So here, what we are learning is the Vedantic meditation. Concentrate on the sound part of Omkara first. That means you chant Om in your mind. And focus the in your own mind, when the mind chants Om, there will be a sound Om. Internally, there will be a sound. Because of the vibration of thoughts of Om, 
there is a sound created. Visualize Virat, Hiranyagarbha and Ishwara. That means the three words I visualize in the sound O. Focusing on the sound, I put all the three words into one sound Om. And then what do I do? I shift the second step is I shift the attention from sound to the silence. I stop chanting Om. I there is an intermediary silence. And that silence I try to expand further and further. Suppose in between another thought of the home or office, something comes. Immediately I pull back my mind, again chant Om. Again meditate on Virat, Hiranyagarbha, Ishwara. Observe the silence. Again chant Om. This step one and step two are the notes for you to understand clearly how to do Omkara meditation, which has been taught in the Upanishads, in the, in the Mandokya Upanishads, is a very famous Upanishad. And this Omkara uh, meditation is a very powerful meditation. It can take you to the highest truth. Just repeat the process, repeat the process, repeat the process, you will realize that your mind is becoming calmer and calmer and calmer as you listen to the sound Om in your own mind. You learn to dwell on the silence in between the two Oms. The mind becomes more calmer. Again, you sit in meditation the next day. Again, the mind becomes calmer. I've had hundreds of students coming and calling me and telling me, in all my previous so many years of teaching, this Omkara meditation has been very useful, very simple, very useful. Even if I don't re I realize this Thuriyam, the Omkara meditation itself is a great achievement in a spiritual study. After so many years of study, you are coming to this knowledge. And in this knowledge, how do you make use of this knowledge and reach our own core pers personality? You reflect on the teaching in the silence. That means the Thuriyam. Shantam, Shivam, Advaitam. Three words. Shantam means peace, absolute peace. It is not the peace experience in the world because that is fleeting. Two seconds you get a peace. Immediately there will be something bothering you. Again, you'll have two, two seconds of fleet in the waking state. Again, something will come and bother you. This is the nature of the world. You can't stop it. You can't stop any thoughts from erupting in your mind. It's a constant flux of thoughts. Thought after thought after thought, not only for you, for everybody in this creation. So many beings are there. So many minds are there. So many different experiences are there. All are happening in one Chidakasha. There is only one consciousness, which is the Sakshi of these experiences. Simply quiet, just close your eyes and see what is happening inside your mind. You are the Sakshi witnessing the experience of your own mind as Sakshi. You don't need any other meditation because what is witnessing the thoughts is consciousness is awareness. That is the knowledge you pick up. It is Thuriyam. You don't need anything else. That is what is called as reflection of teaching in the silence. A matra 
is not the blankness, but Chaitanyam, consciousness. Nirguna means without any properties, attributes of matter principle. Matter has got properties. Matter has got color, shape, sound, taste. All this belongs to matter. But in Atma, there is no matter. It is the pure spirit. It is the pure essence of the being. Absence of everything else other than me, who am aware of the silence is the real truth. I, the silence awareness, am left behind. It is not an object. It is not an attribute. It is not a part of something. It is a Sangha. It is unconnected with anything. Nirguna without attributes. Anantat, anantaha without being limited by time and space. Anandaha. It is bliss. All this is my Swarupam. In the beginning of this talk, I said the Shruti mother reveals to me through this Mandokya Upanishad my Swarupam, my real nature. That is the second birth for all of us. Rupam to Sarupam. Rupam is what my mother has given me, a form for the body. But Sarupam is given by consciousness, that Shruti mother, which is an expression. These words of Mandukya Upanishad, the 12 mantras, are the expressions of the mother trying to reveal the nature its own nature plus the nature of the whole world. The spirit in us is, knows itself and knows the, re, the entire cosmos. It is the knowingness in us. Omkara dhyanam becomes a sorupa dhyanam. Sorupa dhyanam gives jnana nishtha. Nishtha means firmness, which is called as moksha. Freedom, liberation from the thraldom of the mind and the body. Without these 12 mantras, I will never know about my real nature. With this analysis of Omkara, I know that this is my real nature. Whatever I experience as the body or the mind or the world and the sense organs, they are all fleeting. They come and go, come and go. They all are as per the law of karma, as per the law of cause and effect. There is a cause for whatever I experience in life. But I am neither cause which is the sleep state, the causal body. I am neither the effect, which is the waking state and the dream state. I am beyond the cause and effect. And that is Turiya. With this, the first chapter is over. We have done all the 12 mantras and we have done some of the Karika Mantra analysis through this uh, first chapter. And first chapter has got 29 Karika Mantras. So that is what we have taken up in these uh, analysis so far. Next week, we will take up uh, the analysis of Vaitatya Prakaranam which is 38 verses. We will see the whole chapter, how it is trying to explain to us. The unreality of 
plurality. So we are going to understand in the second chapter, we are going to understand this whole waking state or the dream state. Why do we say that this is unreal? And the chapter two is an elaboration of Prapancho Upashamam. In the seventh mantra, we have seen two words, Advaitam Prapancho Upashamam. So in the second, in the second chapter, we are going to see the elaboration of this word Prapancho Upashamam, which means basically that this plurality which we experience is unreal compared to Thuriya. And the third chapter is Advaitam. The word Advaitam will be analyzed in the third chapter. With that, we'll close the meditation session. Uh, we'll close the uh, Upanishadic portion. We'll start with this second chapter next week. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamathaya Purnameva Vasishade Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. I have two questions here. One question is uh, Without support of scripture, no philosophy can be complete. And Lord Krishna himself in Gita mentioned, I am the four Vedas, holy scriptures as one of the Vibhuti. Yes, you're right. So the scriptures are uh, the tools by which we get a vision, a philosophy. A philosophy is nothing but, nothing but a vision. It's a vision about the world in which we live. It's a vision about the world beyond which we are not aware of. And that's why we have to use the scriptures. The scriptures are given to us by this God, by this consciousness principle. They are given to us. It's, that is the grace of the Lord. The, the Lord has given us three shaktis as the grace, three gifts to us. We have the jnana shakti, the power to know. The second shakti is icha shakti, the power to desire. The third shakti is the power to do action, kriya shakti. These three powers are a grace of the Lord to all of us. That is the gift. With that gift, what we do in our life is to realize that pure consciousness. That is the purpose of this life. Okay, very good Akshay, you have brought up a nice point. Uh, is there any other questions from anybody else? Are you able to unmute yourself? Uh, are you able to unmute yourself and ask a question? If not, you can do it now. You can unmute and ask me if you have a question. Yeah, anybody has a question? Rohit, do you have any questions? 
Hello, sir. Lakshmi. No, Shakir ji. Ah, okay, right. Yeah. You were saying. Ah, sir. Actually, sir. So the Avidya is in Kudastan or is it in Vishwan? Uh, avidya. Yeah. Avidya is always in the causal body. The causal body is a sleep state. And that sleep state is called as the state of avidya. It okay. is not in kutastha. Kutastha is the word used for turiyam sakshi. Uh, so uh, my my question was that only, sir. Uh, whether the avidya is in kutastha or is it uh, or is it mission? What do you mean by mission? First one, no, the uh, that waking state. Vishwa. No, Vishwa. Huh. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Vishwa is, yeah. Avidya is also in Vishwa. Oh. It is also in Pragna. It is also in the Taijasa. So in Vishwa, Taijasa uh, uh, and Pragna, Avidya is there. Avidya means ignorance. So the, 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 as Lakshmi, Lakshmi is just a name. Oh. But Lakshmi belongs to the waker. The person who is in the waking state is is ha, she has got ignorance that means the mind has got ignorance in the waking state the mind has got ignorance in this uh, in the dream state the mind has got ignorance in the sleep state beyond these three states is my real nature i am that sat i am the pure existence that existence does not have avidya the moment you discriminate the three states from the thuriyam, that itself means my avidya will go away. That understanding is called as the thuriyam. Understanding in the intellect, that's all. There is nothing else to experience. There is nothing else. That avidya will just go away. And then you will say, I am that thuriyam. That's all. So that understanding should happen in the vicious, vicious. Yes, it should right, happen sir. to the vishwa, to the uh, in the waking state, the person uh -huh. that buddhi in the in the in the to the vishwa in the waking state gets this knowledge. Okay, sir. And you then can, that's, uh, you cannot get this knowledge in the dream. You uh -huh. cannot get this knowledge in the sleep. Okay, sir. You can only get in the waking state, and through this meditation. It's very easy. You just drop your uh, body and actually what happens in meditation is the world gets dropped as soon as you watch your breath, the world gets dropped. Mm. Then that is the uh, Annamaya Kosha is already gone. Pranamaya Kosha, you drop and say that this prana is nothing but it is the thought. Then you, you focus on the thought. When you focus on the thought, the pranamaya goes away. And when the pranamaya, when you start saying, looking at your thoughts, what happens is the manomaya is there. You're aware of all the thoughts. Then you say, I am the sakshi of this manomaya. That means the manomaya, vijnanamaya, both are gone. What remains is the blankness, which comes the moment you say, I am the Sakshi, you will get that Anandamaya Kosha. That Kosha of blankness, also you say, it is not me, I am the Sakshi, I am the witness consciousness. In that, everything is gone. And you remain as it is, that's all. You just remain as it is, that is our real state, and that is the entire teaching of the Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads. What happens is that after learning this, suppose you say I've attended this class today. Why I'm facing the waking state? Will I not stop facing, getting the waking state from tomorrow? No, it will not happen. Why? Because this world is a law of karma. And the body is born for certain actions. So the action will continue, but you will remain as a pure being. You will not be affected by the sorrows in life. The sorrows will get wiped away because there is no more any desire left in you for enjoying the world outside. You are a pure being. You get that, you get that knowledge. And the body continues. The body continues to have... Uh, it goes through the motions of actions, 
it has its own joys and sorrows which it will face as per the law of karma so that state uh, actually so in that can we say that it is so, so suruba anusandhanam yes that is what is called as swaswarupa anusandhanam that is in okay. vivek chodamani we say that it is the swaswarupa swaswarupa means it is my own nature that oh, all you come to know that it is my nature okay understanding is the ultimate knowledge understand that i am the pure being and in meditation it is possible to remain as the pure being just go into that pure being and remain for one two minutes in a day that's all because it's like taking a dip in the river ganges the mind it is exposed to the world during the whole waking state you hear the sounds you, it is an automatic process which happens the world of thoughts comes automatically the moment we get up and the body starts uh, feeling that the location and everything starts is all automatic only the fact that i am this consciousness in this consciousness only everything is happening that is the knowledge so let the actions go on let let anything happen in the world outside i am rooted in that pure being that gives me the strength it gives me the strength to face anything in life that is the beauty of this knowledge after you get this knowledge you yourself will say i am very happy i am very peaceful you wouldn't know why it has already happened to you it 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 is an, it is it is gone into your subconscious mind and there is nothing else more that subconscious mind will give you that peace which you have been it, it is a grace of the lord that peace also comes because of the grace of the lord okay any other question thank you sir thank you sir thank you okay if there are no other questions uh, i'll stop here yeah and uh, we will continue the second chapter next week yeah and uh, thank you everybody good night thank you sir thank you thank you jagdish thank you thank you thank you right